audio sources and then come over here and undo this so I can try to hear myself. Yes, I can hear me, so that means I can hear you. I really mm -hmm. shouldn't. All right. Boop. Boop. Uh, <laughs> now the only thing I need is a method of activating an asset and then having to move it without activating every other asset. Hello and welcome to some sort of talk show. I am Tyler and joining with me once again is on this side, <laughs> even. Hello. Uh, as we descend into the madness of that is the road trip that is D and D Monster Manual. Um, last week we did we began our demon section we're <laughs> heading through and um started with what we deem to be one of the more lower classes of the demons and today we're going just a little tier higher um and the way that we're doing it is we've we've previously selected um whether we wanted to or not a demon lord that we're kind of working our way up to and so we're giving you examples of their you know their their thralls their middle ground areas and then the 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 dude themselves or in the <laughs> rare case the lady all right um so for this week did you find yourself like was it really kind of like a frustrating one or was it a little easier than the last one I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do, like until I like jumped into it, and you'll see in mine that I like I do some sketching and thinking, uh, and definitely it got me. It got into a decent part where I'm like, okay, I know what it what it is, but I could have like it's a good first draft. That's what I think. <laughs> All right. Um, for me, I had an initial idea, but then I came across a more recent um blender video on youtube and i i saw the timestamp, and it was like it was very it was a lot more recent than the ones that i'd watched in the past and i was like can i do this feature now and so um <laughs> you'll see me just kind of abandon everything else and just focus on this one feature for forever and then yeah we'll we'll, we'll get to that so um should I introduce the your monster first or should I go into the thing and then we'll talk about the monster later in your opinion I think um I think we can introduce the monster first and kind of look at things the, the monster is the one thing I don't have assigned to a quick button so um, all right, so your monster is assigned under a monkey because I just didn't want to change my titles. So, bam! <laughs> Not a monkey. I mean, if I had blurry eyes, I could mistake it for a monkey. But what is this thing? This is a Goristro, and um, it's kind of like in like canon D and D Forgotten Realms kind of area and stuff like that. Uh. It was modeled after, created by the demon god, I think Baphomet. That is like demon god, like of a uh, of rage and minotaurs and stuff like that. So it made this giant minotaur thing that's like huge, so like the size of an elephant. Um, and it's funny they go to like such great lengths to talk about how stupid this creature is. <laughs> Unlike all other demons, it's just like it's just dumb. It doesn't have magic. It's stupid. It's just big. Um, and like one of its defining factors is that since it's so big and so dumb, sometimes like an elephant, it does have like pelicans on it uh, that like people can like ride it and like stand on it or like it. Uh, I found like a lore story of like one that was so large that it has a city built on it as well. Um, 
So I thought it was like a neat, strange kind of creature. Uh, and I also like I liked the little spikies on its back as, uh, as well as its horns. And so those kind of jumped out at me as like perfect things to shove daggers into, uh, like the daggers of Rock Tukesh into. And so Rock Tukesh, as the Rage of War demon lord in Eberron, I thought that this would be a good evil platform for other demons to ride. So that's what you'll see me designing. Um, they are described in a in a very in the farthest footnote on D and D Beyond that sometimes they bear a palanquin. I hope that's how you say that, because that's how I've been saying it my whole life. Um, that mm. sometimes bear smaller demons on its back, much like how an elephant will bear riders. <laughs> yeah. So Let's... that jumped out at me, like, super hard. And it's funny because I had already kind of decided that this was the creature that I wanted to do before I would re uh, really read that. But that was, like, the hinging point this morning when I was like, okay, what, what am I really going to be doing? And let's and I find think, out like, it has what you ended up doing. Of, like, siege creature, which means that it, it does double damage against de destroying, like, inanimate objects. So it's just, like, good for smashing into stuff. So that seemed like Rage of War business to me. What did you end up with it. We'll get to that after your, after your, after the commercial. <laughs> Bam! Oh, okay. no, wait. Really? It's me first? I thought it was you first. Ah, yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. Got everything cued and then just forgot first. your order. All right, fine. We'll I'll show the thing. Um, labeled as Manes. <laughs> um, I went with the Glabrezu because it. Um, once I so once I figured out um the how to how to do the the blender feature, I immediately regretted my decision. However, <laughs> um. For the demon lord, um, Grazit, <laughs> um, the Glebrezu seem to have the most potential for, like, glitzing up and glamorizing. Because <laughs> um, of extra arm. And all the, you know, and just all the horns, you know, you could put rings on that shit, you could, you know, you could make him, you could make him drip some, some fine metals, you know? <laughs> um what so what this thing is basically is just kind of one of the more mediocre like one of the he's like the definition of the mid tier of demons he's not really that strong but he's not like mm. he's not weak by any means um so unlike the guristro he's got some innate spell casting which um i i want to make a note though that in almost every depiction of a, of a Glebrezu, those two like more human fists, I've almost never seen the the fingers splayed out. <laughs> so there's a kind of there's kind of a, a head cannon of mine that they're just they're just like that. Like that's how those limbs actually are is just two fists. <laughs> like they just look like fists, but they're actually just like like they don't actually have like fingers. <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> but I do like the inclusion that they do have um, spell casting abilities because they have those more humanish hands to actually like weave symbols and such like that. Even though the spell casting is innate, all that means is that it removes the material component. They still have to speak and um, gesture as such. Um, they're actually quite intelligent with a score of 19. Oh yeah, um, that's really sweet. They, you know, they fall into the more, like, um, canonical concept of what a demon is. I mean, their first sentence of their description is, A Glabrez who takes pleasure in destroying mortals through temptation, and these creatures are among the few demons to offer their services to creatures foolish enough to summon them. Mm. So, um, very, very classic. And I decided to try to make um, them fancy which does not work very well when you've got um like a normal like um normal anatomical like arm position and then you have weird non-anatomical arm position <laughs> so um 
This is the best that I could do. Shabam. I went onto Thingiverse and I found a Glebrezu um, model because I did mess around with this previously just to kind of see if I was able to do it. And then once I was like, oh my god, I could do this. Um, we we're doing cloth simulation, ladies and gentlemen. I can make coats and shirts now. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> um, so whereas last week when I was saying that I wanted to put a kind of like a um, like a butler's tuxedo on the manas, um, but I just didn't know how because the one other program or the add-on that I was aware of that did this sort of function, um, you know, you had to spend some money for it. And uh, I just don't do the cloth enough to really feel that that investment would be worth it. But now I guess I could play with a lesser version of that program a little better. So this is just built into Blender as far as I'm aware of. I don't think I downloaded anything that allowed me to do this. Um, but now that I can put clothing on my characters, uh, there's also a sculpt brush that I've kind of been seeing um, people have a lot of fun with on Twitter and such where it's actually... Um, specified for the cloth so <clears throat> the one downside of being super excited about um discovering that i actually can play around with a function is that um i've never played with the function before so <laughs> all of my clothing is going to be super basic so i apologize for like not being as detailed and whenever this sort of situation comes up whenever i shut down my computer i do the what i consider a walk of shame because it's like three o'clock in the morning um back to my bed uh i always sit there and i'm just like oh, god damn it like I, like even has to be kind of annoyed every once in a while whenever i do this kind of shit because it's like he puts up his thing and it's like detailed it's shaded it's got you know depth it's got you know all this blood and shit dripping off and i got this basic ass <laughs> I got this basic ass tunic thing that I just kind of stitched together. Um, I don't know. I've watched yeah. you. I uh, like we've been friends for so very long that it's kind of fun getting to see you do art stuff. <laughs> so <laughs> getting to watch this journey, I think, is kind of interesting for me. <laughs> like, <sighs> it might be better for the channel, maybe, if you had more experience, <laughs> but. Well, that was kind of what I was hoping, but there are certain monsters, like there are certain stretches of monsters where I just kind of do the same thing and there's no real progress and I get kind of disappointed with myself because I was just like, on these other things, I can totally see where there's like, like massive progress. Um, <laughs> like I, I would like to think that my chull was a lot better than my Aarakocra, but you know, whatever. So... The idea here originally was like, yay, I could put a shirt on. And I just kind of wanted to showcase that, even though I did it in a previous version of this file that I didn't record just because I wanted to do it off recording just to make sure that I wasn't going to make a complete, you know, butthole of myself on recording. <laughs> um, mm. But then the idea was to go for a, like, so obviously the, the first thing that came into my head was those two human hands i oddly enough we're gonna actually mess up my idea for like a really nice fancy like collared shirt and stuff let alone the fact that i have no idea how to stitch together a collared shirt via this method um that's like some <laughs> 3d chess like craziness um so it's just more practice that i have to do so now i i, I have this basic foundation so now i need to you know take a step forward and being like yay collar um so shirts were kind of an iffy thing so i was thinking all right so let's go with like the like beauty and the beast era like the cloak thing that the beast was wearing and i can make a little clasp for it and stuff um but it turns out that the the what's it called the collar or the what's the classic like vampire like <laughs> deep deep collar looking thing that area of the cloak is um 
it, it's very stubborn. It doesn't want to act the way that, <laughs> I, you know, I would initially imagine it would act. Hmm. Um, so Do I you think kinda... it would have been easier to just, like kind of like let it flop and form there and then like grab the points individually and move them or build something else on top of it? Probably. Um, probably. I mean, these are all things that I, you know, I just did what I'm flying by the seat of my pants like at the time <laughs> of this recording. So um, these are all notes that I'll write down. Um, but I have a, I, I have a basic cloak that I'm pretty, you know, satisfied with, <laughs> especially when combined with the tunic cuirass looking thing that I had earlier. Cause then you can't really see the back at all. Um, mm. and then, yeah, we've got, um, an attempt at some lower garments. I was considering pants, but... I was also kind of feeling a little out of my mind at this point. So I was like, what's simpler than that? Can you imagine how weird it's got to be, like, trying to, like, tuck in your toes and, like, ankle bits so that your claws don't catch on your pants as you're trying to put them on? Yeah, and I totally go on a rant about that a little later. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny it looks like the big uh claws pincers every once in a while are like holding that open <laughs> i could imagine that the little the little hands just use the larger claws as like a coat rack until they're ready to actually like try to put it on the the main body <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i think this is yeah. weird that like my or the uh, the Bargura is like can sh change its shape to not look like a Bargura. <laughs> I hate that name. <laughs> um, but this one that delights in like tempting and like deceiving cannot change shape. <laughs> yeah, it's just forced to look like this. I feel like that's part of like the evilness of the demons of this list, like giving them the wrong powers and wrong setup to be able to do what they want to do. <laughs> So at this point, I kind of showcase the fact that I, 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 I still remember that grease pencil is a thing, and I kind of need you guys to use your imagination a little bit because I get super frustrated and I just kind of rage quit a little bit on the lower garments. <laughs> and here's my little rant about the ana the ana anatomical fallacies of putting pants on certain creatures. <laughs> <laughs> Because this was this was one of those creatures where the more that I was working on, um, you know, other parts of the body, so like um, putting the shirt on and then trying over and over again to try to get this what's supposed to be a sarong or you know something you know around mm -hmm. the waist, the more that I get to look at like the other portions of the body and just being like, yeah, I, I mean, I could try to forget about this project and go to pants. But because I've worked on this for so long, the more that I look at those feet, p pants aren't going on this guy. Like, it, it's not happening. <laughs> uh, he's wearing an apron or he's, you know, he's wearing like a chainmail sarong or something, you know, some kind of a kilt. <laughs> um, it's funny, I, it reminded me like a while back, like long time ago, I don't remember where I saw it, but I saw a whole like <sighs> design, I guess, portfolio by somebody that was just exploring like the riddle of like if our legs were backwards like birds and, like flamingos and stuff what would architecture look like <laughs> and then, like i did a similar thing um and i was like doing stuff on like picking out nagas and like snake bodies like if you did if you like did have the lower snake portion like what would what would you want to sit in like what would chairs be like what would stairs be like would you ever have stairs because that's a weird thing like or would also it be too slippery if it was just like shoots like you maybe you do need things to like slink up like, I don't it's such a, it was, but... such a weird riddle trying to imagine like if things were different like what would you want to do i don't remember what it was but i i want to think it was a disney thing it was definitely like 
pan animated, but they had so there's 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 Robin Hood's Sir Hiss, right? Who just kinda had a little you know, neck cape thing and like, you know, whatever, I can accept that. But there was one snake character that I remember that actually did have some semblance oh, you know what it might have been in um Usagi Yojimbo, actually, but it was super silly because it was um, from where a snake's quote unquote neck would be. And it's just, it was, oh my god, it was a full kimono, right? So we had the shoulder pads and everything. And um, like, if you can imagine, like what a sh shogun might wear without the armor. And it went all the, 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 the wrap went all the way down to where his quote unquote tail would start. Fun fact, Snake's tail is actually a lot smaller than you think it is. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, it went all the way down. And I would look at that and I would think, I hate the fact that I've spent so many years in biology classes because I know that because of how that, because of how they designed that clothing, the snake would not be able to move, period, <laughs> without, like, just removing itself from its um, clothing. Um mm. uh, but yeah, because they don't. Although, actually... if you're being honest, some of the like the the really fancy um, feudal Japanese like clothing, well, like he didn't really move much in that. Like, well, that who, was... whose design style was it to have pant legs or like arm things that were too big so it just flops over you? It was like you just have to like shuffle and hope you don't fucking trip or have to turn around at any point. You're like, well, nope, we're gonna circle around to that one, guys. Like. Well, that was the funny thing, is that he was the, um, he was a magistrate sort of character, so he, all he did every day was just sit at a desk and just kind of command, <laughs> command people to go collect taxes and then command the, the ninjas to go harass, you know, some dignitary or something. <laughs> so he didn't actually really ever like do battle but when he did somehow he was like super epic by not wielding an actual like blade or anything anyways tangent <laughs> so um here i get to a point where i was like all right so i'm i'm super frustrated with I, like i'm really happy that i've got the cloth thing like as a, as a basis down but i'm really cool. frustrated that that i wasn't able to do I, I wasn't able to figure out how to like wrap a sarong very well in the, within this program or with this method. Um, mm -hmm. I might have to do like a shrink wrap thing instead. But um, so I was like, all right, so let's do one more revisitation of something that I tried to attempt before. And so um, it this is more or less like a... Um, Crap. What uh, do what do the Greeks call those those little olive crowns? Hmm. One I'm sure those, they do have that. One of those things. I keep wanting to call it a lay, but that's not what it is. Um Laurel? Yeah, that sounds correct. <laughs> Laurel um, is just a hangy thing of plants. But, oh. Well, wait a minute. I don't like the like a Olive crown, like maybe those were called laurels, but you could also like in decorating a house, you put up laurels and stuff. Mm. But yeah, so this is um, this is my attempt at another sort of like spiky crown sort of thing, because you can't show up to a party without some sort of head, you know, without sort of some sort of head headdress. <laughs> um, <laughs> And uh, so if you can imagine this same type of a concept, except these spikes are like 28 in a circle and they're all sort of spiraling like upward. Um, that's what the original concept was going to be to make more of like a more like a crown of thorny ish sort of thing. But then I was going to like spray paint it gold and make it more like horns and stuff. But this is the this is kind of the lame. I haven't worn, you know, I, I wore this when I was 13 and I haven't worn it in like 20 years type of thing. And you know, I've got better crowns, but I feel like wearing this one. 
<laughs> and I sat here for a minute thinking, like, I need to dress up those claws a little bit, but, um... Yeah, I would. I I I couldn't even really think straight <laughs> at that point. I was super satisfied that I actually managed to get some sort of a, some sort of a semblance of like a crown thing that I was trying to attempt before, and, um, just learning how to do the cloth thing was super taxing. So my soul was dead. It was one of those things where it's like you know you. You didn't do a lot physically, but you go to school, you go, you know, through three classes, and then um, when you get out of your third class, like, you know that you physically haven't, like, run or done anything, but you're just tired, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's that kind of a thing, where this only took about an hour and 24 minutes, but minus recording time, minus the time that I took to be like, wait, I can do this in Blender, and then, like, test it out and be like oh crap i can do this in blender um by that time i was just you know mentally tired <laughs> i was at the end of the day i was just super happy that there is um a really cool community out there that um make a bunch of you know ready-made models that people could just be like yeah you know come and you know download this thing you know throw me 15 bucks and uh you know color it put hats on it <laughs> Just don't call it, you know, just don't call it yours. <laughs> um, did I add I the monkey? I think I added the monkey. Not see it not having pants. Or like, <laughs> it's very, it's very frustrating. It with its frustration and it's like various limbs all splayed out and then just no pants. <laughs> Screw the abyss. Uh... I hate this place. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, not like pants of my thing, or any of those things. Now, there's a lot of nudity in that one. <laughs> um. All right. So yeah, that was my dude. I'm assuming because yeah, he's got the little monkey crown. <sighs> okay. So that was my Glabrezu journey. <laughs> I really wish that I'd found out the cloth thing on the went during the manas. Cause mm. that's a more that's a that's a much more simple body structure <laughs> than try to do this. Um, yeah, but I really do think that a Glabrezu wouldn't bother with like a shirt. Like I was kind of thinking that he would he might bother with like a mafia esque like large coat, you know, big like big furred collar kind of thing, and just have mm. the little arms like. Yeah, you pull out a little gun, <laughs> a little, <laughs> little, little worthless gun. I got this from the material world. Um, so yeah, the things that I would put on him would be a like a large, like coat. But the problem with the coat is that I had to, I had to figure out how he would get it past the claws, um, which was the same problem that I had with the pants. <laughs> You know, how are you going to get it past those, the, the, the thickest part of that appendage? And it just, it just doesn't work. Um, yeah, I would so have one of those, like, and it'd be the apron. You'd put the, like, the top part on, and then you'd, like, tuck the teeny arms in, and then, like, tie it behind your back. Just keep your front bits kind of warm. Oh, uh, yeah. All right. Yeah, <laughs> I, I would, really need, I really I need put like, too much thought into thing. that one, because I, I played a, or my character died one time in this one campaign, and then I was given a one of the other like NPCs that was there that was like a dragonborn that like had like the had dragon wings, and like I was like trying to think like I don't know part of my process to get into my character's head and to understand characters is to draw them, uh, and then to like journal from their like point of view and then their voice like that's how that's how I get into characters. Don't judge me. Uh, we're nerds here. So that's how it goes. But like, it was weird trying to think of like, sh like how like she's like sneaky. She tries to hide the fact that she like does any of that. Like, how does she have like wings? How does she hide that? Like, does she wear like vests or halter top things? Like, I don't know. It was like it was a fun experience of like really exploring different like fantasy body types. <laughs> yeah. 
whole demon world, man. Would uh, it'd be interesting seeing like the demon like I don't know mall and like all the different like clothing stands. <laughs> I'm like, oh, what what do you have? Oh, four arms. We got just the thing for you. It came in our spring collection. See, but that's what you need to do for like recurring characters, especially if you're if you're if your player group actually does like force them out of their like their one of their like hideouts or their main base or something and they force them to flee like just for world building practices you should put up like just a wall where something like that is like there you know just the closet where you open it up and it's all these like different <laughs> different coats and collared shirts that just have the torsos punched out <laughs> <laughs> And we definitely had that moment with like almost instantly. I want to say like after I took over this character, it was like two or three sessions and we ended up into a place that was so cold that we needed to buy new clothes. And so I had to figure out here, like, what am I gonna, what, like, what am I gonna actually, my character didn't need new clothes. So I just got faux clothes because she was um, like her draconic heritage was icy. So she was like, I'm cool. This is like, I don't think she ever actually been around snow. She was, so she was like comfortable for once. <laughs> but definitely had to dress up other people and I had to like pretend to like be in clothes so I wouldn't stand out too much. Interesting. And now Stupid. we move over to less fancy things and more violent natures. So let's see how you uh, changed up a Goristro to be what more sharp <laughs> more metallic yeah. more sharp and Metal. metallic really i don't even think i did that much to it like maybe it was just because i didn't i don't know i didn't try to think of it as a, like with my um Bar-Gora, i was thinking of it as like a human that like just started started to transform out of like being a human and really I don't know, swelled up and turned into a Barbora um, through the power of, like, the Demon Lord. But, like, the Goristro, I didn't start there. I started with the Goristro. Like, maybe I should have started as a person, but I felt like they had to have gone so far that, like, maybe the bar Barbora... <laughs> maybe. It's like a little bit of, like, chaotic hell in my mouth, like, flopping around. Uh, sorry, Internet, for that visual. <laughs> um but uh yeah like i was thinking maybe it would have been cool to take my original character and have it start to like evolve up like pokemon-esque into this gory <laughs> but like the pose took over so you saw i like i did a couple of little sketches to try to figure out the angle and what really stood out me uh, out to me was this like um uh palakin thing that would be on its back and so I wanted to do a cool pose where you would really focus on the back. So I have it like turning kind of sideways and about to check a big old stone and stuff. Yeah, so yeah, it's very it's it's very uh, Shadow of the Colossus right now. <laughs> yeah, so that would be kind of I don't know. It kind of it really sucks sometimes um, when certain demons have or D and D creatures have cool connections where it's multiple things but like this has a cr of 14 it's really that's really strong and if you wanted to add several other demons on top of it so that you were like fighting on it and climbing up it and stuff like that is really powerful like at that point you have the magic to just like flip your fingers and just make them all disappear in a hole like <laughs> so it's actually kind of boring but i don't know <laughs> I really like. I, I'm just really fixated on the hand that is holding the theoretical ro rock that it's gonna like hurl, because it right now it just looks like the 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 hand the rock is the hand, and so I just keep getting like the shadow Col the colossus vibes where it's gonna like put that down eventually, and then that's your that's your moment to try to like clamber up it, and then start your your strength checks to try to get up to the shoulder, and then try to get up to the nape of the neck and go yes and stab. <laughs> Mm hmm I really sometime I want to run like a not a long campaign, maybe it could be a one shot, but like just like a mini arc. Um because like I grew up I didn't play Shadow of the Colossus much. I do I do remember it being there, 
But a thing that like is like embedded into my childhood is Power Rangers and like uh um what is it Gundam. And so I thought it would be really cool to like have these like city Shadow of the Colossus monsters that like fight each other, but you're people that are on top of these like these cities. And I know there was a movie that came out like that. I think um I don't know, it was like cars or something. <laughs> like cities on wheels that fight each other. But I thought that'd be kind of fun uh... of like while you're fighting, part of the thing is like you're like big beasts are fighting. And then we'll switch back and forth between you guys as the players collectively making decisions controlling the beast fighting but then switch into that small version where you guys like okay you could just like the fist is crashing all of you make it like an athletics to jump from one beast to the other start infiltrating the other beast and fighting your way to get to the like the control center like and i thought that would be like that'd be such a sweet like too epic thing <laughs> Not that it matters at all, but uh, Mortal Engines is the movie you were talking about. That's huge. Um, I like how cool. I like how you I actually know. do have like the different tiers of like here's first class and here's second class. That might not be how you intended it, but right now, until you put demons on that thing, <laughs> that's what it looks like. Where it's just like you didn't you didn't have enough souls to be able to pay for the nice large platform, so you have to sit next to <laughs> the butt. Right. Here's like where I was actually kind of frustrated at myself. Because I knew where I wanted to go, but since I only kind of like hashed this together in like an hour or so. And why I was saying that this is a good first draft is that, like, these are kind of there, but, like, when I put the demons there, I'm just kind of, like, building them on top of. It doesn't feel like they they fully interact with in the best way. And good, you know, good drawing skills requires, to a degree, making dark spaces behind light things and light th uh, spaces behind dark things so that you your eyes can like focus on things. Otherwise, there's too many details and it all just gets lost in the same space. And that's gonna happen here kind of a bit. And so I wish I knew where I was going so I could draw draw everything out and draft it well with its like outlines and things and then shaded it properly. But I don't know, I just kind of wanted to play around. So it's a good first draft. But I like its little it's teeny little eye, like looking over. Are the spines are the spines a spine thing or is the spines a um flavor? The spines are a flavor for me, but well, uh, in the Goristro, there are okay, little spiny like, things. But... Yeah, they're like tiny little spiny things. Yeah, I was expecting more like um more swords and things more more blades because like right now it's just the hooks really that are just kind of like the more um demon lordy type stuff i guess the emphasis of the spike so like where a normal goristro just you know milling around any sort of plane would have like the little tiny things but by being in the realm of that one demon lord, it kind of gets emphasized and exaggerated a lot more. So, mm -hmm. uh, all right. Actually, and here's yeah. where like, a mistake ish, I don't know, a laziness that I foresaw is that I did, I made these guys like at first really small. And then I was like, you know what? Now I need to make them actually larger because the Goristro themselves in general, are a huge creature. So elephant size. And so I put a mayonnaise, uh, mayonnaise. I, I smeared some mayonnaise on it. <laughs> and then I sprinkled it with a little bit of closet. And then I like slapped a big dollop of uh, dench on it. Uh, dretch. You know, I keep on yeah. saying dench. That was one of my, like, uh, one of the characters in a different campaign I played. I saw and that so body then, like, shape and I was like, that's a dretch. <laughs> yeah. Gross. But, like, really, I think maybe the closet should be higher on the tier of, like, strength. I know it's, I, I think it's stronger than, like, a man is. Um, but it is, like, a, a like small or tiny creature. I think it's tiny, where the man is and the uh, dretch are both, like, small creatures. I wanted to put, like, 
I think it'd be cool. I don't know to go more mythic, and if the Goristro was like a colossal type creature, <laughs> to have like the like buzzing flying demons, like the Varox or the Chasmes on it. Yeah, like it'd be so much more interesting. But this is like you know, I tried to I tried to tone it down just a little bit. Well, I already mean, this a... is the CR. I don't know. Sixteen I mean, with the power. With the power of DM, you could always give the Goristro or the Bargra a name and then change its size category so that now it's no longer just a standard um, version of that species. Now it's this, you know, it's this identified, like, (laughs) mini-boss. You thought that was a Goristro? Uh Uh-uh, that's George. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and I'm going to pet him and love him and squish him and sacrifice his soul to her. Uh, uh, I'm having fun adding red onto things, you guys. This might this might be the new flavor. And we will be Make shiny it. and crimson. Mm-hmm. All right. There, there we go. I don't know. I like how I did the horns. They're very Hellboy-ish, but whatever. Um, but it's kind of funny looking at like the other Goristro horns, and even in some of the early depictions of what how they were saying, like kind of like said like they're more like bison horns, and then they had other ones that like loop down more, kind of like uh, oxen. But I like this scoop. It was a good like. I guess S curve moving from the horns down the spine and down the legs. I like how you began by saying that he's got this rock that he's going, he's like preparing to hurl at someone, but the and it was it was true until you added the red. Now it looks like you lied, and he's just going around just smushing things with it, especially with all the blood that's on his head. So, so it's like it's like you're the safari guy and you're like oh he's gonna he's gonna throw the rock at someone and then it just goes around and just smushes all the small things you're like oh uh i meant to say <laughs> <laughs> you know i think maybe he smashes some throws some bowls it at some things goes and picks it up and throws it at other things it has a six intelligence guys come on <laughs> <laughs> It's smart enough to know that it can't read, but it knows what you're saying. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I don't see any other detail, so I'm going to assume that that was the 10 minutes. I think so. I mean, I think I tried to stop the video after I took away my color swashes in the bottom, but that looks like what I finished doing, so we're okay. good. I think it's yeah. funny finding feature on both of our creatures right now was uh quote unquote clothing <laughs> just the accessories <laughs> accessorize <Yeah>. um <laughs> true who knew that creatures that love carnage and mayhem just want nothing more than to douse themselves in drip <laughs> drip or drown in the blood of the innocent Mm-hmm. Um, it's weird. I kind of wanted to put a uh, a Glabrazoo on it. There was a lot of creatures that I wanted to like couple with it, but there are only like one size category down, so it would just be more like a kid getting a piggyback ride from their parent. Which is like, yeah, I was yeah. The minute you said that, I was imagining um, more lord of the rings like oily font rider type of thing where like you can have all the smaller people in like the backpack in the back but you can have like a larger creature like a glabrazu or you know something with a large category on it like on the neck and actually like like steering the thing actually um the other thing i was going to say was um you were saying earlier how it's not uh what was it it was um Something about the size or that it wasn't dynamic enough, um, that there wasn't like an interaction or something like that. And that's why you had well, like it's just that the little creatures, crazy. like when we're looking at this as a full thing, and on my screen right now I have it kind of minimized so I can look at our two things that are up. Um, they just get lost in the back. Like and we can't 
it's hard to d determine that those are individual creatures on this unless you're like really exploring it. And I think I could have done a better job creating an interaction, but also a separation so you could visually tell where each creature begins and ends. I don't think my idea would have helped that at all. And if I were you, I wouldn't try to do it at all with the time and the effort that I would give a crap about this particular <laughs> this particular instance. But um, a way to the the idea that came into my head to kind of portray more of an interaction and kind of give the things on its back a little more life and um, just action in general is to add a second Goristro with its own economy on its back and then they're just having like these like um, like battleship type things of like you know, throwing harpoons and fireballs at each other and just being like Goristro is just like ah. Um, that could be kind of cool. Like, they're really stupid. Um, <laughs> but they're like, big man, like, both of us intertwine our arms and try to push at each other. And, like, knock each other with these horns while all the other creatures, like, just chuck rocks at each other. <laughs> yeah. You pull out the spines off of its back to throw at each one. You could have you could have two quasit that are actually dolled up in, like, what would, to them, be considered pirate attire and just running, like, along the arm to try to, like, siege the other one that's also running along the other arm. <laughs> um, mm. But that's a much more complex scene, and why I would say that if I were you in that situation... I also wouldn't do that. <laughs> I would just leave it where I where where you have it right now. And like sometimes I, I struggle with this a lot. Is that eventually I post these on Instagram, so they're like, I don't know, they're still kind of messy. I, I could do a lot better job, but since there's such small real estate in that little square, so that we can do this, sometimes it's just like I, I just can't get things too small, otherwise we lose it. Um, yeah. But another side thought, I was thinking when you were thinking about like the two creatures fighting and creatures on top of it fighting, uh, or uh, we've talked about this a little bit, but I was thinking about like, remember in one of the Smash Bros, but there's like Pokemon uh, like floats or something, and you're jumping from one float to the other float while you're fighting. Oh, like that would yeah. be really cool. <laughs> like if it was like <laughs> the monsters fighting each other and you just have to like dodge from one monster to the other. That would be that would be a crate oh that would be a nightmare to set up as a DM, but that would be a really cool like campaign scene where like your characters start on an airship or something, that gets sieged and then they drop down onto a larger like demon thing that's already having its like small like war economy happening on its back, and then somehow like the characters either get knocked off of that, it just keeps going down and down and down until they find themselves on the back of a grease road that they're surrounded by all these quasit and then and then when the whole thing's done they're just like oh my god the crap like the goal for the dm is to have the, the players at the end just go what the crap did we just do you guys <laughs> just sitting and i just sitting in a cave just being like we we need a long rest i think <laughs> what happened to our airship <laughs> right like there's a good like as if you fall down and get lower and lower or eventually you're just dodging feet while trying to like fight all the like little small minion things. Yeah. That's like, exciting. <laughs> and then on and then on my end, um what I didn't do, what I did in my practice round and what I didn't do here was um I was going to solidify that chest plate cuz I I did kind of want it to be more of a, like a clothy tunic, but I really liked how the the collarbone plates I forget what that's called like that actually has a name but I liked how high it actually rode up so I was like oh that would actually be a really cool cuirass so if I if I solidified mm. that away from the cloth thing so I would just apply those modifiers and then it would just be its own mesh in itself then I can start adding like um like like um gem studs or something just like to line something around and just add like gold and stuff and just kind of like you know just further just further bling this guy out just to be like yes if i'm going to be in the court of um grazit then i have to be as fancy as possible even though i'm pretty sure the glabrezu would care would not care at all about all this thing it's just like yeah this is just what i wear to get through the door and then look food <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I don't know. 19 intelligence. He might show for the chess game, but not for the not for the costume party. You know? <laughs> That's uh, true. But also, I, I did kind of sit back there. Like, there was that pause time where I was trying to think of what I could put on his head because I was this close to putting a top hat on him. <laughs> and I was just like, I don't, I don't see that happening, especially with the horns. I was also going to swap out the head. I didn't because I was so enthralled with what can I do? Like, how much practice can I get with the cloth simulation that I didn't want to spend too much time swapping heads? Um that's a little bit more intensive because the head that I have is thinner and more profile than the thicker necked like Glebrezu head um, yeah what other what what other kind of things could I put on the head or the crab claws do you think <clears throat> you know, I don't know something that I I like the idea of of like creatures that are slightly more immortal as well as like horned creatures in general. It'd be such like a permanent thing, but like uh, the way that people like carve ivory like tusks and stuff and things like that, I think it'd be interesting to go through and like etch in like patterns on each of the horns and claws themselves. Then like if you did colors, like, like just in, I don't know real life like i think i'd imagine like creatures like inlaying certain things into those claws like it'd be such a permanent thing but if you could get a real good magic smith to like etch an inlay so that you don't have too much decay on your bits i think i don't know that could be neat yeah he just clicks it twice and they just ignite in purple fire and just ha ha ha, ha. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That would be scary. That is an accessory I didn't quite consider. Just like the, like carving in, just like the, like the descent of Dante into like one horn and then just like another into another horn. Right. It'd be like I don't know, just a very a different take on like tattoos and stuff. I think uh, Dragon Age has these. Um, uh, oh man, I forget what they're called, but they have horns, like big old horn, uh, um, uh, bullhorn kind of people. But like some of them, when you're like choosing your model and stuff, uh, I don't think many of them are etched in that way. But they kind of have like casings that go over them that are metal that are like tied, and those ones have etchings and things on them. Um, okay. Because they're also like warlike, so they're like you can choose some that have broken ones. So I imagine that there's also prosthetic things that you put over. Like mm. one, if you didn't want to chip it, and two, if you did chip and break it, like you can just put the <laughs> like the the casing over it, and like there we go, good as new. Yeah, so I think just the... put a cap on it, like a dental cap. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's a lot of different things that you could go with that, because the other direction I could have gone with, I wouldn't be able to air on anywhere <laughs> so um but you want to pants? yeah i just put a big gross scaly donger on him or something um so that is it for demons for this week um next week we try our best to do a demon lord um, um. Yeah, I got soul searching to find out how to do not just normal hands, but weird hands. <laughs> um, and then after demons is what do we have to look forward to? What is after demons? Don't have. I don't know. Devils. I think there's something Pull between it. Ah. Uh, Dip, 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 dip. No, Might be yep, dinosaurs, devils. but we don't want to do dinosaurs. No, do you want to do devils. dinosaurs? It's devils. Um, so I kind of, I really like this format for um, devils. It wasn't as, like, taxing as I thought it was. Um, but, I don't know. Got to get to, got to get through Grazit first before, <laughs> before we make that conclusion. But I think we can do the same thing with devils, though it's a little less... It's a little more shady because devils 
don't have like the strict hierarchy of like you are peasant status you are more high class and then you are the lord <laughs> as far as i'm aware like they have weaker devils and then they have like stronger devils but they're all sort of like i guess there's i mean there's the different layers of hell but uh, yeah okay yeah maybe I mean, we could choose each a different layer of hell and just design according to that one because i already there's like two or three devils that i think are way cool <laughs> but we can get to that when we get to that all right that sounds like a plan um all right cool so so yeah next week the demon lord themselves and um I hope you appreciate. Uh, I hope you appreciated this, and I'm sorry that I'm too lazy. If you're watching this on YouTube, I'm sorry I'm too lazy to really edit this down at all. But um, I try my best to put the timestamps in. Um, come watch us live on Twitch.tv/foxstar underscore. That's F O X S T A R R underscore. Um, you can check out even on his Instagram for more arts and past arts at his handle on Instagram, um, at evenstarlong. Yes. I yes. guess I could make that larger just so that's a little more easier to <laughs> read, uh, even yeah. though it blocks your face. Um, and I hope you tune in next week, either live on um, Sundays at 2 o'clock or um, on Mondays on YouTube for when we move on in this horrible, horrible road trip through the D&D &D Monster Manual. Um, thank you, and bye-bye! Bye, Internet!